time. It is 1 p.m. at Oatana, and we are at 25%. Just drove down here. It's 32 degrees, so just freezing. And it feels like it out here with the wind. Here is the unit. Those who want information, this is an Autel charger. And we're going to try to light it up and see how we do. We've got the CCS to Tesla adapter, so we'll be testing this one out too. Blinking. Heard the click. We're great and charging. Excellent. Very smooth. Payment terminal worked. Yeah. Very slick. Very easy. Yeah. Um, we tried to make them easy. We like the screen actually see it fall on it so yeah. <laughs> I'm the first in the entire country not like globally to get installed oh uh, so they're still working on like the this type yeah this time so they're working on getting the payment system with the card reader and with the Autel app and also ready charge our network provider to all sync up they all have slightly different sure. features and you know, they have different definitions sure. of what like an idle fee would be parking fee so we're figuring all that out. The goal is long term probably to have it cheaper during the daytime because it's actually powered by that solar field you can see over there. So, um, yeah, both units can run entirely off that solar farm during the daytime. Nice. It's kind of cool. <laughs> yeah. Good afternoon. We are down here in Owatonna, Minnesota, and I just plugged in at some new chargers using the CCS adapter for my Tesla Model Y. Ethan, you helped get these installed. What's the deal? Why are they here? Well, my name is Ethan Cords. I'm the founder of Sparkplug Chargers. We're a Minnesota-based startup that is focused on growing EV charging across the country. And we worked with the Steel Wasika Electric Cooperative to install these chargers. Cool. Yeah, it's a good spot, not too far off the highway, so that's exciting. When did this process start? Well, earlier this year, the co-op contacted me and asked for charging solutions, and I had just gotten new Autel chargers in, and we gave them quotes, and they were by far the most competitive quote available, and they liked the screen that they have, and they liked the dual-port charging features. They're capable of doing 40-kilowatt charging to one car or 20 to two cars. And okay. so we have a total of four ports that are available. Okay, so each charger gets 40, yeah. and then it's split however it works with the cars. Yep. Yeah, I can see why they like the screen. It was very easy to get it started, plug in, and then, so these are all CCS ports, correct? Yeah, we currently have all CCS ports. We are talking about retrofitting a few NAX adapters as well in the future. Okay. Yeah, you can probably wait a year or two for that, but... Yeah. yeah, for right now, it's a great solution for CCS vehicles or Teslas if you have the CCS to NAX adapter like I do. Did you come to the co-op and say, hey, we want to charge? Or did, were they just kind of shopping around look, thinking they needed to have some charging? Or, you know, uh, who who saw the need, I guess? We had talked a few years ago, and I had just given them information about EV charging, and they had actually bought a Chevy Bolt EV that they have for their company, and uh, they ended up contacting me earlier this year in, I believe, May. Okay. So. And now we're in December. These actually came online a bit before Thanksgiving in November, 
but they're still working, so that's good. <laughs> and right now they're in free vend mode. What's the process? Are they are they still kind of looking into what they're going to charge, how they're going to charge? I did put in my credit card, but then it's you know just saying zero charge. So what's the process? What's the thinking and kind of where they're going to head on that? Uh, the electric co-op is the one who owns it, so they'll be the one setting the final price. Um, we're not sure yet what the price will be, but we're going to charge per kilowatt hour. Okay. And that way, it's if the charge gets split by 2020, like we had talked about, you won't be getting overcharged, like some that do a time-based charging. Mm -hmm. um, so I know it'll be per kilowatt hour charging, and we might eventually add idle fees okay. if people are leaving their cars overnight or uh, blocking the charger unnecessarily. Sure. Yeah, they were all open when I drove down, so that was nice. I could pick my spot and just back in and start going. I think it took about 30 seconds to a minute to initialize the charge and then you know, plug in and started rolling and ramped up to 40 kilowatts pretty fast. Yeah, and I'd like to point out we actually have a CCS to Tesla adapter here on site. And so during the co-op's business hours, Tesla drivers can come in and get the adapter. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, that's very handy. And I think I saw on the door the hours are 8 to 5. Yeah, so 8 to pretty 5. Pretty standard. Yep. Yeah, that's a great perk. So you've kind of been around installing other chargers as well. So tell me what's going on with the, with the installs as far as, like, what kind of businesses are looking to put charging in or which ones have put charging in and different levels and kind of what's going on in your world. Yeah, I've worked with a huge variety of companies so far and homeowners. So we started out by selling Clipper Creek chargers because those everyone knows them. They're nice and reliable. Mm -hmm. So we started selling those nationwide to homeowners. And from there, we ended up branching out into apartment buildings and hotels and then started doing DC fast chargers earlier this year. And so, so far, we've installed at McAllister College in St. Paul. We've worked with Winnebago RVs on a project as well for a private facility. And we're currently talking to a few casinos and the city of Stillwater. We just got in contact with the group out there. Nice. So we're hoping to get some deals made. But we've also worked with Best Western and Marriott Hotels. Fantastic. Yeah. You mentioned um, apartment complexes. What are the people looking for for solutions there? I know that's kind of a big mystery. You know, everybody wants to charge at home, but not everyone has a personal home, personal driveway, or garage. So what are the solutions people are looking for? One apartment that we're working with currently, we're doing kind of a like two-pronged solution to it. We're going to have simple free-to-plug-in chargers, but they'll be in reserved parking spaces. And so people have to pay for parking at that facility, and they'll have to just pay a little extra to park in the EV spots. But then they'll also have, in the main uh, parking lot of the building, they'll have pay-to-use chargers. Okay. And they'll be level two. And so if you don't want to pay, you know, an extra hundred bucks a month to have a reserved EV space, you can use the general parking EV charger when it's open. Okay. And so you just pay per kilowatt per hour. Per kilowatt hour for for that time yep. whenever you'd use it. So yep. if you only need to charge once a week or something, that might be the better option. But if you have a longer commute, exactly. You would want one of those permanent spots. Yep. Nice. Yeah, yeah that's gonna be a curious uh, situation over the next few years how that plays out for sure yeah that yeah. sounds like a good solution yeah that works for that property but everyone's different so we're working on case-by-case -case basis on what solution really makes sense for each property <laughs> definitely so tell me a little bit about the autel chargers that are out here what makes those the chargers of choice as far as um, reliability ease of use you know what are the big features of those yeah, so we went with uh, Autel 40 kilowatt chargers at this site, and we chose Autel because they have a history of reliable automotive parts and service features. Um, I know a lot of Ford dealerships that use them for their like diagnostic tools, and they're really reliable and handy. So we decided to use them for chargers. I know other people have used their home chargers and like them, and so far we've had really good reliability with their um, DC fast chargers so far. The screen is nice because you can sell advertising space or just promote your own company on site. Uh, it yeah, also, I, I noticed they say, you know, powered by solar. And right. I instantly started looking around, well, where are the solar panels? <laughs> They're just, you know, across the parking lot. And right. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And they also are easy to read the screen, seeing how fast you're charging, what your price is. 
and other things like that that are very important to know, your battery percentage and even time remaining on the charge. The chargers have 20 kilowatt power modules inside of them, and those are shared across all Autel DC fast charging stations. So it helps reduce price because they share parts with all their other models. And on some of the newer chargers they're coming out with, they're actually up to 480 kilowatts per port. Huh. And the 20 kilowatt power modules, if one fails, it only derates it by the 20 kilowatts. Oh, and nice. you can replace them in under three minutes with a single technician. Wow, so, so. If, they're, if they're pretty universally used on that type, mm -hmm. if something were to go wrong, you could Get them swap it out pretty fast. Pretty quickly. And we actually had a situation with our site at McAllister College where we were shipped a charging station and it did not include a card reader. And we want credit card readers because they're nice and simple. I don't like using apps for everything. I'm sure I other people either. don't either. Yeah. yeah. And so we called uh, Ready Charge and Autel up, and within a week they had the, the charging station with a card reader ready to swap out. It only took a few hours, so their service is really good. They're quick to help out with things. Um, their lead times are like some of the best in the industry. Uh, these chargers were actually delivered in June oh, or wow. July. Of, uh, and it was only a few weeks after they ordered them that we got them delivered. Fantastic. So, yeah, so we're expecting next year to start doing quick rollouts whenever we're finding sites ready to have chargers. Well, our biggest holdup will be the utilities. Sure. So, Yeah, getting the wires run out there. Getting the wires and concrete, yep. How has the co-op been to work with? Uh, it's been really easy. Um, they are the ones who own the site, so they did a lot of the planning. Um, and I helped out with just initial site design, but they got it done as quickly as they could uh, without sacrificing their member services. They obviously sure. come first, but they were really nice to work with and have helped me get in the door with other utility companies. So even just in the last few weeks, we've gotten contacted by other electric co-ops and their customers to hopefully install more chargers. Fantastic. The more chargers, the better. Exactly. And so let's talk a little bit about this site. This is in a co-op parking lot. There's not too much around, but there is a fleet farm, definitely in the summer within walking distance. Yep. Uh, but there are some other things at this exit. There's a, a Target nearby. Mm -hmm. I'm not from the area, so what else does this area have to offer? There is a lot of factories around here. It's kind of in the industrial park, but there is the hometown credit union across the street. So if you need to use their ATM or any of their services. They're across the street, nice and easy to get to. If you go to the fleet farm, like you said, it's less than a quarter mile away. So during summertime, easy walking distance. Target's right across the street from that as well. And then you can always door dash food in from all the local restaurants. Sure. So. Yeah, and some of that, um, they were very kind when I got here, let me use the restroom. But again, their hours are only 8 to 5. Mm -hmm. um, so if you need a restroom, probably a stop at uh, Target or Fleet Pharma on your way in is a good idea there. Yeah. Well, that seems to cover this site pretty well. Uh, Ethan, how can people get a hold of you? Or, um, you know, if they're looking for charging in the home or a utility or business, you know, how does that process work? Uh, you can visit my website, www.sparkplugchargers.com. And we have pages where you can order home charging stations. We offer three types right now, and we're adding uh, more in the future to offer. Uh, for businesses, you can visit our public charging page, and there's a contact form you can fill out with all your info, and we'll get back to you within a day. Fantastic. Well, thanks so much for getting these units installed. So far, it seems like a great charge. And thank you to the utility for it being free for the time being. Um, and thanks for the work you're doing, getting more charging in more places. Yeah, thank you for coming and visiting, Brian. We're happy to give you a charge, and thanks for the interview. <laughs> yeah, perfect timing. Just as we're walking out from the interview, we hit my 80% uh, limit, saying 78 here, but we're all done. So great, we got uh, 41.27 kilowatt hours, and that is excellent. Good <laughs> Perfect. All right, it says 79, and that's what we had it set to. So that was good. That last paid session is not actually not from this session. That was my last time here in Owatonna, but it's 207, so 
just over an hour. A couple quick notes before we wrap up here. The charge was free, but the card reader, when I tapped my card, did put a $50 hold on my credit card. It was reimbursed, but just be sure you're using a credit card instead of a debit card when you authorize that so you don't get an unwanted surprise. And naturally, the long-term value of this station will be determined by how much they choose to charge, an idle fee or parking fee or anything like that. So keep an eye on that. Hopefully that'll be updated on PlugShare, but for now, it's a good solution. I gained about 54% in my 67-minute charge, so just over an hour and got over half the battery, which is pretty good, but not blazing fast. So you might want to drop a spouse off at Fleet Farm or Target while you go to charge and just hang out on social media or eat something or whatever. The charge rate maxing out at 40 kilowatts isn't blazing fast, but I was thinking about when would I use this? And on my recent road trip down to Texas, I was coming through, stopped in Oatana at the supercharger and had an eight minute stop and then continued on my way to home. But my home isn't far from Oatana, so that was pretty easy. Since that was an overnight trip, I was napping at some chargers and some superchargers would have been too fast. So this actually offers a good solution for people in that situation where you want to take a little extra time, get a nap before another big push on the road. You could stop here. It's a relatively safe environment. You charge at a little slower, but you'd be able to get that nap time in and then continue your trip if you're on a, a big road trip. And as I said before, the more the merrier, more charging, the better. The right people will find the right stations to charge how they want and make the most use of this. So as more EVs are getting on the road, we need a different variety of charging stations. So it's exciting to see these new stations in the ground. And the fact that you're charging with solar during the daytime is pretty cool. So thanks to Ethan, thanks to the Steel Wasika Electric Cooperative. So if you're driving through Oatana, need a charge? need to stop at the Fleet Farm or Target, uh, this will be the spot for you. Charge on solar during the day and enjoy your charging. Happy road tripping. <music> <music>